anyway, boys, I'll uh, I'll get to my winner now from uh, from the deadline, and that's the Calgary Flames. I mean, you look at what Craig Conroy has had to do in his first year as general manager of this team, and what he's been able to accomplish with the trades and getting the pending UFAs out the door and getting assets back and learning from that whole experience that they went through with losing Johnny Goudreau for nothing to the Columbus Blue Jackets is really something to applaud. And uh, I give Craig Conroy all the credit in the world. Like, I'm not going to run through all the pieces and everything. I mean, you can go to um, tsn.ca and, and see the trade tracker there and look at the pieces that the Flames got. But it's a lot of prospects. It's a lot of picks. Some players that can help them out right now. Kuzmenko has been a great fit, and that deal looks like a grand slam home run for Calgary with uh, with Vancouver, the Lindholm deal in particular, because Lindholm has really had a tough season, and uh, the whole change of scenery for him in Vancouver really hasn't worked out so far other than the first couple of games where he scored a couple of goals, and And that's it. But like, it's just crazy, guys. Like going back to June in the offseason, Craig Conroy has had to trade Tyler Toffoli, Nikita Zadorov, Elias Lindholm, Chris Tanev, and Noah Hannafin. Like those are big name players, big impact name players. And, uh, and, and for him to get back the pieces that he has and, and move this thing forward. Um, and not let any of these guys go for nothing, I think is just something to applaud him for. And so good on Craig Conroy and the Calgary Flames. They can finally start retooling this thing. The last few games have been rough for them, but I mean, they've been hanging around in the race. I don't think they get in now, but, um, you know, coming into the off season and the draft and everything, uh, big, big times ahead for the, uh, for the Calgary Flames as they, finally commit to a retool slash rebuild here and good on them good on craig conroy and it's not just the pieces that they get back it's the fact that they were put in a tough situation with all of those trades like all of those guys expressed that they wanted to leave all of them are on expiring deals and there's you're you're put in a bad position usually when a team wins a trade either they're getting the big piece that's coming the big fish or they're trading when they have leverage. There was no leverage here. They he had to get rid of these guys and he didn't lose any of these trades. You know, there's an argument to be said if he's if he's won, you know, any of them, like I think he has personally, but you know, you'll go back and forth with people on on every single one of these trades. But the fact that he hasn't lost any of them and he's gotten a lot of pieces back and he's picked a direction for this team, I think that it's a big win. Bingo. Picking a direction is huge case. I'm glad you said that. That's what I was going to say. It's been a team in the middle for so long who is supposed to be better, supposed to be better. And then they're just not. So then they hang on to all their assets and nothing happens. So picking a direction is huge. Selling off those guys who didn't want to be there. That's huge. I will say when you look at the trades in a vacuum and you don't consider any of the context in, in terms of leverage, you know, I look at the Zadorov deal and I think, well, you know, they probably could have got more for him. And I look at the Tanev deal and I think, well, they probably could have got more for him. But then when you consider all the factors going into it, the fact that if they didn't do these deals, the players would just be out the door for absolutely nothing. You know, good on on Conroy and management for getting at least something back. And like you said, Case, I don't think it's clear that he you know, I don't think it's evident that he lost any of these deals by a landslide at all. Like it's, you know, I look at it and I think, ah, maybe he could have got more, but at the end of the day, he got something. And for the most part, it was quite a bit too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of, a lot of quantity here. Like, you know, it, there, there may only be quality in in a few of these deals but a lot of quantity which gives them a lot of options and now it's up to their it's up to their amateur staff especially with um with you know can they prove that they were right to get uh brustevich and yermo and grushnikov and and all these guys that they got in these deals and also draft and and develop really well and again i just hope that 
with with this draft this summer that they're able to draft T. Jaginla because how <laughs> cool would that be? That would be cool. And Harb, I'm glad you mentioned like the actual guys who they picked up, like the players. They also got, you know, former Devils prospect Ahoychuk. So like that's just another guy yep. who can contribute. And I think, you know, GMs are starting to realize that first round picks aren't as important as they used to be. So I think it's it's kind of good that Conroy has gone out and trusted some of his scouting staff to pick up players like Brustevich is the big one, I think, who, you know, you know, this kid, like, you know how he plays and he's yeah. already a bit further along than a kid you might pick, you know, 15th overall in 2025 or something. So yeah, I, exactly. I think that's like that. That's not minor. So I, I do put some emphasis on on getting actual young, good players back in return. I think that's that was good of Conroy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely something to uh, to applaud for sure.